Uh, my name is Feng Ling, uh, and I'm from University of Colorado, Denver. Uh, I will be presenting cardiac scan, uh, non-contact and continuous authentication system based on the heart motion. And this work is completed in SUNY Buffalo together with my colleague Wen Yao Kui from SUNY Buffalo and uh, Chang Zhi Li from Texas Tech University. Nowadays, with the booming development of smart devices and the Internet of Things, actually authentication is pervasive and ubiquitous in our lives with applications in smartphone, uh, laptop, smart lock, uh, door access, and uh, even smart home control. So the existing one pass uh, validation can protect the legal access in some extent there are unneglectable vulnerability in the one-pass authentication. Uh, especially when the user is away from the system or is falsely taken over. So continuous authentication can continuously identify the user's identity even long after the initial uh, login process. Ultimately, it can verify the system can be guaranteed is operated by the same user who is initially authorized to log into the system. While existing solutions is, are not available for continuous authentication, they are neither applicable or usable. Some of them are vulnerable to spoofing attacks, uh, such as face recognition or fingerprint. While other methods are not user-friendly, uh, such as uh, password, you have to key in the password every certain, uh, every certain period, or uh, for gaze pattern, you have to look at the screen all the time. So our solution is non-contact and heart-based authentication. So the Doppler radar transmits uh, radio signals and, the, and it receives the signals, reflections bounded back. In this way, it can capture the heart geometric information. And, and the one natural question is why cardiac motion can be a unique identity? First, let's look at the official definition of cardiac motion. Cardiac motion is a 3D automatic deformation caused by the self-excitement of the cardiac muscle. So basically for a complete cardiac cycle, it includes five stages. Among these five stages, uh, three of them are considered as heart relaxation, and two of them are considered as heart contractions. So these contraction and relaxation period correspond to the uh, peak point and the valley point in the heart displacement signal. So these uh, peak point and valley point are called fiducial point, denoted as AFP, ASP, and VFP in the figure. From a biological point of view, no two people have the same heart structure related muscle and tissues. We can see our heart has right atrium, right ventricle, and left atrium, and left ventricle. So they are, so, uh, they are geometrically different uh, in terms of the uh, surface shape and the volume. So to capture the heart geometric information, multiple radar is deployed around uh, the subject to enable sensing from different directions. Each radar can capture the ventricle and atrium vibrations from different angles, uh, such that the heart displacement signal reflecting the ventricle and atrium geometric information can be captured. Some audience may be curious that if the cardiac motion biometric will be affected by the heart rate variation. Our answer is no. Um, this is our main advantage of our system um, comparing with the traditional ECG biometrics. 
Traditional ECG biometrics is significantly affected by the uh, body condition and uh, uh, even emotional status. For example, when you, uh, after a, a intensive exercise, the, it will impact the ECG performance. Uh, the heart rate variation only changes the interval between each cardiac cycles without altering the inner cardiac geome geometry information. And the geometric information uh, is kept unchanged inside a complete cardiac cycles. So our conclusion is our method is robust against the body condition and emotional changes. So in the following, I will talk about how our system works. So this is the general idea of our system. The cardiac radar captures the authenticated user's cardiac motion information, and such information is stored in the database serve as authentication credential. Once the cardiac radar capture a cardiac motion from an unknown user, it compares with the pre-stored credential to determine uh, whether to authorize the access permission or reject the user. And this figure shows the principle of Doppler radar sensing. The Doppler radar sends uh, uh, the transmitter signal denoted as TT because of the Doppler effects caused by the cardiac motion, the received signal denoted as RT will contain a displacement component denoted as XT here. So later we will demodulate this XT and extract hard features from it for classification and authentication. And this is the overall signal processing diagram of uh, our system, basically it uh, um, include a signal pre-processing to remove ambient noise and uh, noise caused by the random body movement. And the next will be the uh, radar demodulation followed by the heart geometry uh, feature extraction for classification and authentication. In implementing this signal processing flow, uh, there, are major, uh, there are two major challenges. One is the interference caused by random body movement. Another is how to design this system to make it uh, resilient to spoofing attack. To address the first challenge, uh, multiple radar setting is necessary. Uh, we can see when the uh, user perform a, unintentionally perform a random body movement, it creates opposite Doppler, free, uh, Doppler frequency shift to the radar signals. By combining this low speed baseband signal, the random body movement can be significantly suppressed and the heart motion signal will be even prominent. The second challenge is how to make the system secure and robust. Um, the anti-spoofing strategy we adopted is the, uh, called liveness artifacts detection. As we can see from this uh, frequency spectrum diagram, uh, our cardiac scan system not only can capture the heart rate, but also can capture the respiration rate. As we know, the respiration rate and uh, um, heartbeat occupy different uh, frequency bands. Um, because of this, our system can, um, can detect a replay attack because usually the uh, spoofing attack will not contain any respiration signals. So um, our system can detect it and uh, reject it. The next step is about uh, feature extraction and the classification. Uh, remember the displacement signal we discussed before. Uh, from it, from, uh, based on these fiducial points, we can extract uh, temporal descriptors and uh, spatial descriptors. Uh, basically, they are the uh, normalized time interval and uh, displacement among these fiducial points. After that, we um, employ the SVM, RBF, as the classification method. And in the following, uh, I will discuss the performance evaluation. Uh, first, this is the experimental setup. 
uh, we can see a subject is sitting in a chair with two radars placed in front of him and uh, after him uh, with a distance of one meter each. A pulse sensor and a chest belt is attached to the subject's uh, finger and uh, chest to provide a reference for the heartbeat and the respirations. Uh, totally, we recruited 78 participants uh, with the age range of 16 to 54. Here are some parameters of our systems. Our radar operates at the frequency of 2.4 gigahertz with the band wide 5 kHz. We have two antennas, one serve as a transmitter and one serve as a receiver. And uh, the following are uh, some uh, types and uh, models for the acquisition devices, uh, pulse sensor, and uh, uh, chest belt. I will uh, skip this part. Uh, to evaluate our system is um, practical in use. We evaluate our system from multiple aspects. So the first is the accuracy. Uh, our system can achieve more than 98 accuracy in terms of balanced accuracy and the F1 measurement. And the RC curve result is also consistent uh, with the um, F1 measurement and the balanced accuracy. And also we uh, calculated the equal error rate. Uh, we find out the um, equal error rate can achieve um, as low as 5%. Uh, with the four cycles um, setting. Uh, as a continuous authentication system, uh, cardiac scan can proactively conduct the conti continuous authentication in the background without uh, interfering the user's normal workflow so that the user uh, don't have to change his behavior to adapt to the system. So the authentication time will not affect the usability of the system, but it way may bring some overhead. So we um, try to evaluate the impact. Uh, in this study, we define the authentication time as the um, processing time plus the, the sensing time. We change the authentication time from one second to six seconds with a step of one second. We observed that the performance is increasing until four seconds is reached, then the performance became stable. To find out the optimum authentication time, we calculated the growth rate, and we found out the four seconds has the maximum growth rate, which suggests it is a turning point and maybe a good um, authentication time. So our conclusion is, Four second authentication time will not bring uh, overhead to our system. We also evaluate our system in complex conditions. First one, we want to see the uh, distance impact. From this uh, result, we can see the close distance will have the better performance. This is because the baseband IQ signal uh, the amplitude, amplitude of the baseband IQ signal is inversely proportional to the distance between the uh, cardiac radar and the subject. And we want to see if our system is sensitive to the location. Uh, therefore, we conduct, uh, we collect multiple a set of uh, cardiac signals uh, with a degree uh, with, with uh, uh, degrees of orientation misalignment from 10 degree to 30 degree. And from the result, we can see uh, the performance in terms of balanced accuracy remains stable um, with different uh, degree setting, uh, no matter how many cardiac cycle it is. Um, we also want to prove our system is robust uh, to uh, emotional changes, and uh, um, therefore we conduct a set of experiments examining subjects uh, in different emotional status, including meditation, listening music, reading, doing math calculation, playing VR driving game, and immediately after intensive exercise, uh, we can see the performance are uh, almost stable, um, in terms of balanced accuracy and the equal error rate. 
this is because our system is independent of the um, heart rate variation as we um, discussed before. Um, we also conduct a longitudinal study within six days and the result suggests it's a, a robust system, it's a, a robust biometrics. And as a continuous authentication system, the uh, authentication stability is very important. Uh, the purpose of this study is to um, verify whether this system will misclassify an authenticated user as an adversary. And the result turns out to be sufficiently good that no authentic user is falsely uh, locked out of the system. And the import, uh, last uh, important thing is the vulnerability study. And uh, this uh, is the replay attack uh, experimental setup. And we can see um, we employ a linear actuator in front of the Doppler radar with a distance of 30 centimeters. The linear actuator is programmed to um, perform a harmonic back and forth pattern towards the um, radar to emulate the cardiac motions. And the 12 subjects uh, were participate in this study serve so as the authentic user. And uh, the result is good that all replay attack were rejected based on our uh, respiration detection anti-spoofing strategy. So um, our future work will be involving in testing the system with subjects uh, of cardiac diseases or the subjects using a pacemaker. And uh, with this, I will wrap up my talk. We proposed the cardiac scan. It is a non-contact and uh, heart-based continuous authentication system. Thank you very much. I will take any questions.